you ever played a game that just felt right? Kind where running, jumping, or even moving your cursor just felt satisfying? Well, that's game feel. It's an overlooked yet crucial aspect when it comes to game design that can either make or break your indie title. But what exactly is game feel? And how do most indie developers master it? Let's dive into it. Game feel refers to how the game physically feels to the player through the controls. Whether that be through the game's controls, animations, sound, or visual effects. It's not just about responsiveness and how responsive your controls feel, but it's more about how the movement and the interaction combine an emotional connection. And what exactly do I mean by that? Well, Steve Swink wrote a book called Game Feel, and he breaks it down into six steps. Starting off with step number one, real-time control. That is basically how immediate and smooth your inputs feel. So when I think of something like that, I'm thinking about something like Celeste. Going into number two, we're talking about simulated space. And that's how objects interact with the world itself. I feel like the Breath of the Wild series and the new Tears of the Kingdom game are a great example of this. And going into number three, let's talk about feedback, sounds, animations, and effects that reinforce the actions. This is often something that's overlooked when it comes to indie games, and I think it's one of the biggest tells to tell if somebody has made an indie game before or not. And going into number four, context. How the mechanics fit within the game's worlds, and if they make sense or not. Number five is a metaphor. How the game's physics relate to real-world expectations. And last but not least, it's the aesthetic resonance. The intangible vibe that makes the movement enjoyable. Something that really just can't be explained by words, but you just get the vibe. So let's break this down a little bit further. So how do indie developers make something feel so good on such small budget and small teams? Well, we have five case studies to look at. Starting off with number one, let's talk about Celeste. Celeste is a game about tight platforming with instant responsiveness. Coyote time, which is something that in the industry is known as a slight delay when you're running off of a ledge that allows you to jump, even though you're off the edge, makes this game feel fair and fluid. Also, the screen shakes and sound cues when you're dashing is something that makes this game feel aesthetically pleasing. Celeste is one of those games that checks off a bunch of our boxes within the six that we just talked about. So let's hop into number two. We're talking about Hollow Knight, everyone's favorite game. Hollow Knight is a game that is known for its snappy and weighty attacks that use freeze frames on impact. The game also uses damage knockback and enemy reactions for impact satisfaction. On top of that, they use a lot of layered sound effects that enhance the immersion. Let's skip to an older game and see exactly how game feel was being made back in 2012. Hotline Miami. Hotline Miami was a fast and punchy combat game that was ultra responsive with its inputs. It had a bunch of over-the-top splatters and screen shakes and audio cues to amplify all of the impact in the game. Hotline Miami also touched on one more thing that we haven't really talked about, and it's momentum. When you were playing this game, you were allowed to have instant restarts, which kept death feeling good and kept the momentum alive while you were playing. That's something that a lot of these other games don't really have, and it's kind of unique to this game itself. Now let's go into number four, Dead Cells. Dead Cells has a fluid and weighty combat with responsive dodging, procedural generated levels that also feel fresh yet familiar. The hit effects in this game, the enemy reactions, and environmental destruction all add to a tactical depth that you can feel while playing Dead Cells. And last but not least, let's talk about Katana Zero. Katana Zero has a precision-based combat with time-slowing mechanics. It has stylish visual cues and a dynamic camera that work to enhance every single move you do in the game. And those are just five games with examples of game feel. There are so many more smaller details that you can do to add to your game that will make your game have more of a game feel. So after talking about those five games, and I kind of want to give you guys the freedom to kind of put those six categories into those games and see how they work. As you can see, not every game has all six, so you definitely don't need all six when you're making a game and you want your game to have game feel. But adding a few here and there is what's going to really make your game stand out and stand out uniquely. So before heading into our next dive about how to add game feel to your game, if you guys can consider liking and subscribing to the channel, it would really mean a lot to me. But let's hop into it so we can make everyone a better game developer. So here are some tried and true techniques that are used by top indie developers in the scene today. The anticipation and follow through. This is a subtle animation that happens just before and right after any actions that makes the movement feel more alive. Or the squash and stretch. Slightly exaggerating character movement creates fluidity and impact. Camera work is another one that's hugely overlooked. If you add small screen shakes and parallax movements to your camera, it's going to make your game feel a hundred times better. Also, if you want to start adding some subtle zoom enhancements, 
that's going to make the game even feel more immersive. A lot of indie developers also rely on input buffering and coyote time. Now it's a little bit more advanced for some of us beginner indie devs, including myself, but I think input buffering is actually worth talking about. Input buffering alone as a concept is just making the character feel better about what it's doing. So if there's anything that you can add to one of your features that gives the player forgiveness for maybe not hitting a frame perfect button, will make the game feel even better for the player. Unless of course you're going for one of those rage bait games where you have to hit it, then that's a whole different story. Frame freezing on impact is another one. It's a short freeze on hit attacks that makes your attacks feel a lot weightier. You can think about like Hollow Knight and Dead Cells or even Celeste. Game feel is one of those things that you want to immerse your player no matter what. So if you want to have better game feel in your game, just try and make your player feel like they're actually in the world. Now let me stop you right there. Oh, I'm making a cozy game. Can't add game feel to my game. Well, that's why you're wrong. Game feel isn't just for action games. Even slower based titles benefit from this hugely. Let's look at Starting Valley. Think about all the farming actions like watering and harvesting. Think about how smooth they feel and how satisfying it is to do them. Then we have Journey. The gliding movement is finely tuned to feel effortless and serene. And The Witness. The line drawing mechanics feel intuitive and make puzzle solving tactical. Even Animal Crossing New Horizons. The UI interaction and the tool use feel polished and rewarding. Game feel is one of those things that separates the great games from the good ones. It's the invisible magic that keeps players entertained and engaged in your game. So whether you're an indie dev or somebody who just loves good design, pay attention the next time you're playing a game and see if you can spot out any good game feel design. Because this, this is where the magic happens. What's an indie game that you think has good game feel that you think I missed? Let me know below in the comments. And if you want more deep dives like this, then make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.